Hey everybody, my name is Adam Booth, more commonly known as ABOM79 on YouTube and across social media. So recently the folks over at Practical Machinists reached out to me and asked if I would be interested in filming a shop tour video for them to share on their YouTube channel, which I was more than happy to oblige. A good group of folks over there, they got a lot of great info that they share. So I'm going to grab the camera, we're going to walk around the shop. And uh, I'll show you some of the machines and some of the tools and the equipment that I have here. I've even got some of the current jobs here that I'm going to share with you as well. I am a third generation machinist beginning my career working for my father in 1997, uh, just before I graduated high school. And again, third generation machinist. My grandfather was a machinist his entire life after he came back from uh, World War II. He became a machinist and worked his whole life until he retired. Passed on the skills to my father, which he then passed that down to me, and I've been doing it ever since. I have a true love and passion for manual machining and many of the old school principles and ways that things get done around the machine shop. I am known for manual machining and industrial repair work, and that's what I've been doing my whole life. So typically on my channel, you see lots of different heavy duty or industrial repair work and uh, even some fabrication jobs there as well. I do not have any CNC equipment in my shop and I've actually never run a CNC machine either unless you call a 3D printer a CNC machine. I have ran one of those. But anyway, let me grab the camera and let's walk around and we're going to give you a shop tour of my shop here in Pensacola, Florida. All right, so I'm going to turn you around and we're going to start right here near the front of the shop. And what we have are my two shapers. So right here I have my uh, G&E shaper. This is a 32 inch industrial universal table. And then over here I have a 25 inch Smith & Mills shaper that I picked up about a year ago. And I bought this to uh, be a shop project, a rebuild project. And that's what the intent of this machine is right here. I look forward to uh, hopefully getting to this pretty soon start taking it apart, doing any kind of repair and rebuild some scraping and clean it up and just have fun as this, you know, make this a rebuild project right here. And the, uh, the shapers, this is a subject in many of my videos. I've got a lot of videos showing some jobs that I've done on this shaper right here. And I've always had a love and a passion for the old machines, the old ways of doing things. And growing up in my dad's shop, I never had the opportunity to actually run a shaper so once I moved in this shop and I got rolling, I really wanted to find one. And I was very lucky that I found this machine, got it for a real good price up in Pennsylvania, shipped it down here and I cleaned it up and I've been using it ever since. I just love these old machines. So up here in the table, this is a current project that I'm working on right now. And this is a collaboration project that I'm uh, helping out with um, Keith Rucker over at Vintage Machinery. This is a stoker engine that he volunteered to rebuild. And there's been several people across YouTube that's helped contribute to this project. And so I'm gonna be doing the machine work inside there on the g and &E Shaper. I've got a couple videos of building the fixture plate to hold this. And next phase is to get in here. We've got these uh, two C channels in here and some weld was put in here using a Uteloy torch. I need to get in here and machine that. And that's what my job will be for the uh, stoker engine here. I do have a rolling gantry in here, and this was also from my old shop that I had brought down here. I think I failed to mention that uh, we closed up, my dad closed up our shop around the 2012-2013 era, and then I moved a bunch of the equipment here to start my own shop. We sold off some of the larger machines at that time, and my dad had retired, and I have built up what you see here since about 2012, all right? So we'll move on down the shop. I'm just going to show you my equipment, some of the tools, some of the new additions that we've got. Um, this is an Oliver drill pointer that I also bought here recently. This is going to end up being a rebuild project. There is a couple things wrong with it. So this has got to be gone through and uh, repaired. But you can sharpen up to three inch drill bits with this guy. Taper sink drills, anything you got, you can sharpen over here. Another old classic machine that works great. We got a hardness tester right here. Got that at an auction. That is an excellent machine. I've used it several times for uh, different projects. We got the tire kit right there. It's got the, uh, the test pucks and all the accessories for it. Around my shop, you're gonna see a lot of tooling cabinets, uh, 
toolboxes. We've got a Lister right here, a Vidmar, and this is where I try to keep all of my uh, tools, measuring tools, cutting tools, what have you. Like up here, I've got a lot of my tooling for the K&T mill up here, 50 taper, all right? Down here, we've got cutters for the uh, horizontal mill. I keep a lot of my precision tools in this uh, Lister right here. I have many different measuring tools. This is something else that I've always been very passionate about is uh, collecting machinist tools. I already acquired a lot of them from my father whenever he had retired, but I have been steadily building up my own collection ever since then. So lots of different measuring tools in this cabinet right here. We'll move down to this drawer. This one's a little heavy, but it is full all the way up just with uh, taper shank drills all different sizes a lot of these came from my old shop all right let's back up over here and we'll talk about what's in the middle of the shop right here these are some current jobs that i have uh, going on that's going to be featured on my channel pretty soon i just recently set up this is a new to me purchase the uh eutectic castling Teradyne 2000 metallizing kit. I'm upgrading from the old uh, Rototech to the Teradyne. I just got it hooked up and we're gonna start using this. I got, a, I got a job lined up right here. One of my newer machines in my shop is the Flex Arm. This is, this is for tapping and you can tap up to two inches with this machine right here. It's got a hydraulic power unit that it runs off of and it supplies the torque to the, uh, the hydraulic motor right here. It's an awesome machine. I've got a few videos showing this. I've got a job right now set up. I was building a fixture for these tie rods right here. So uh, Rare Parts reached out to me. They have a batch of 180 of these uh, tie rods that they build right here. This is called their Fab Series. And during the manufacturing process, somehow the, uh, the threads here got slightly bent whenever they were putting the bends in these tie rods. So all these threads, they were hoping to save that batch by just running a tap through there. So they sent me a batch of five right here to test and see if it works and it worked out just fine. Put this uh, little fixture together and we used the flex arm to uh, run the tap through there, chase the threads. And there's a uh, threaded bushing that screws into this that the tie rod actually goes in. So it's an interchangeable end tie rod. So. Um, now that I know this is going to work, we're going to have a whole batch of these, a pallet of these things coming and I'm going to set them up right here using the flex arm and get them tapped. Along my workbench here, we have a restored Gerstner tool chest that was restored by Gerstner and Sons up in Dayton, Ohio. Had a really fun collaboration with those guys there. Great group of folks. Down here, I've got a lot of my other uh, machine tool accessories, you know, work holding devices. I've got some material down there. Just got a lot of different things to organize and store it underneath the uh, bench right there. Lots of different toolboxes, all full of uh, tools. I could be here all day talking about all the things that I have. I'm just kind of giving you a nice little overview of the, uh, the tooling. Got a set of Anderson balancing rollers up there. Very, very old toolbox right here that was uh, built by a machinist a long time ago that was given to my dad and then my dad gave it to me. So that's pretty cool. This is actually a picture of all three of us right there, my dad, my granddad, and myself, down at our, our, our old machine shop right down the road. So looking down here at the other end of the shop, we've got our Kearney and Trekker horizontal milling machine. This is a model 307S12, hydraulic powered machine. This is one that I acquired uh, probably five or six years ago, done some work on it. I uh, had to work in the knee, had to work on the motor. We got it running, and it's a pretty good machine. It's not perfect, but it is a pretty good machine. Uh, I love having the horizontal capabilities such as this right here. We just did a little job the other day where I had to uh, cut a piece off, so I had a little angle plate set up there and cut some aluminum tubing off. Up here, we got a parking attachment, or that's what K&T calls it anyway. That's something I fabbed up uh, earlier on to uh, hold the vertical head that mounts up on the machine. So I love having this machine on hand. It, it serves me for uh, many different purposes. Whenever you really got to move some metal, this is the kind of machine you want to have right here. This is a true milling machine. It was made for taking a big heavy cut. It's very rigid and I can pretty much do any kind of milling op over here that I want on this machine. It's got a lot of great capabilities added to add to a 
manual job shop. Over here on the other side, across from the K&T, we've got our Dual Mill. This was purchased new by my dad back in 1987. And it was always uh, very lightly used, didn't have a lot of hours on it. We mainly used it to drill holes, to just do really light, repetitive machining ops we would uh, use this machine for. So whenever I acquired it for this shop here, it, was, it wasn't it was a new mill, but it just had very low hours on it. And it's uh, it's been a really good mill. I added a new all DP500 digital readout. We added the uh, Michitoya quill kit up here. And it's a uh, it's just a great little mill. Back behind it, I've got a shelf here with just a lot of random uh, tooling that you would use on the milling machines. We got sets of parallels, angle plates, machinist jacks. Some of the little tooling that I use all the time is just sitting right there, you know, an extra storage up above there. I've got milling hardware over here, you know, hold down hardware, five eight studs, flange nuts here on this side. And I've got a lot of the half inch hardware on the other side over here. This is a stand that I built years ago in the old shop uh, that was behind a different milling machine at the time where you would uh, you know, have the rotary table on here. We've got our super spacer on here and another shelf to set tooling on there as well. So that works out really good because you can have these heavy components right here and just slide them right off on that shelf. So we'll start back over here. This is the Monarch lathe. This was built in 1942. It was purchased by my granddad back in the, I, I want to say it was the late seventies is uh, whenever my granddad acquired this for our shop and it was passed down to me whenever dad closed up. He, uh, this is one of the machines he wanted me to bring and, and uh, here it is. It's an excellent machine. Monarch is a, is a highly regarded machine tool builder back whenever they were designing and building these these were built to last a lifetime they're very heavy very well engineered quiet running machine one of the things i love about it is how quiet and smooth they are you can really move some metal with these it's been an excellent machine this is another recent tool that i added here a few months ago this is a uh, sky hook and mainly just used for changing out chucks such as this guy right here if i want to take this forge all off use the sky hook and you can also use it to uh if you've got a heavy work piece you can bring it in here pick it up with the sky hook set it right into the lathe and i do use it on both machines this goes into the multi-fix which can go right over here onto the victor and i also have another mount for the sky hook another different style of tool post that i can mount on uh, either this mill or the uh, k t and that's this guy right here i just bolt that right down the table and i'll put the sky hook in there and then i'll use it on either one of the mills to uh, change out the vices or pick up some kind of heavy work piece into the mill so love the sky hook and uh, it's a back saver definitely moving around to this side so this is our other lathe this is the victor 1660 lathe another machine that belonged to my dad that he uh, passed down to me this has been another excellent machine it is a good heavy duty industrial quality machine it's got a solid cast base on it right there it keeps it nice and rigid puts a lot of mass into it very easy to operate and it's just been an excellent machine i've added a couple chucks to it over the years we've got a, a recent six jaw chuck right here a tmx that i that i have recently added this has been uh, i love this six jaw i can't say enough about it, it is a set true so you can get this thing dialed in to as close as you want it to, to run. I do have another four jaw, uh, Cushman four jaw. We've got a three jaw chuck right here. That's a Gator three jaw. Back behind the Victor, I've got an assortment of Noga indicator holders, lots of different indicators. Uh, you know, it's just some of the best indicator holders you can buy is Noga right there. Affordable and they will last you a very long time. I have none of them have uh, failed on me yet. So I just love those. Tool and cabinet, just slap full of tools. This was my dad's old toolbox right there, full of tools. Like I said, I could be here all day if I showed everything that's in these drawers right here. This is just kind of a mess, but just some stuff that I keep piled up right here that I'm always going to. While I try to keep things organized the best that I can, I do have little spots here and there where things are still just kind of piled up. And I just slowly over time, I try to improve a little bit here and there whenever I can. Move back here to the back. I've got a uh, dual uh, granite plate. 
and we use this from time to time to do some inspecting and some checking this is a project ongoing right now fireball tool fixture plate 12 by 24 fixture plate i'm going to be mounting a base to it this is the bottom side and the, uh, the top side will have a lot of drilled and tapped holes in there we can use as a uh, fixture plate on the milling machines this was my granddad's toolbox right here actually this was granddad's upper toolbox it's sitting up there this is another Gerstner chest that I acquired uh, some time back off of Craigslist. And I just put it here because I liked it a little bit better to go with uh, Granddad's tool chest. You can see over here in this corner we have a bunch more machinist tools. I've got some abrasives there like Scotch-Brite, sandpaper. I've got different chucks down here. And uh, I'm trying to remember what all I've got down there. But we've got a lot of different height gauges here, some you know, surface gauges indicator holders stacked up those guys right back there and then a bunch of uh, machinist squares up here different makes stare at brown and sharp and then another uh, there's a large height gauge right there that i have as well you see some more of my charts up there we've got more toolboxes um, micrometer boxes right there and uh, this is some of the mill tooling for my uh, do all mill i just keep it all stored right there we've got a kemp smith dividing head with tailstock uh, my personal toolbox that I bought used whenever I was a lot younger from a retired machinist slap full of tools got all kind of stuff in there uh, My reduced saint drill bits right there So we'll move over here to the uh, newest edition of the shop This is going to be the welding Grinding and more of the fabrication area of the shop. I've also got my air compressor and my uh, hydraulic press over there as well All right So this used to be the actual uh, exit door for the building and uh, we uh, we poured a slab and then later on we added a roof that was just a you know just more of like a porch and uh, then I was able to actually fully enclose it and make it part of the shop I'll give you a peek down that way but let's start right up here towards the front side of the shop so this is more of the welding department right here uh, starting over here on the right we've got an Everlast uh, Power TIG 200 uh, TIG welder, it's an inverter TIG welder, uh, really nice machine. Below it, we've got an Everlast plasma cutter there as well. And then this is a uh, stand that comes from a ZT Fab that I've welded together and then had powder coated. Millermatic 251 MIG welder. I also do have the aluminum spool gun with that as well. This was a machine that my dad bought for us way back when I first started working for him. Uh, I was I went to welding school and uh, as I was going through welding school he decided we should have a MIG welder so this is what he bought the 251 and this is dad's old dinosaur of a welding machine but these are such heavy duty machines that they're they're just built to, to last a lifetime so this is a Miller 330 ABP it does have the uh, TIG welder set up on this as well but this is a uh, this is what we used to use for all of our TIG welding, but more, more important than that, we used it for all of our stick burning there as well. I have probably burned thousands of rods on this machine right here, and uh, it still works good today. I've got it where you can turn it right on. And it's a uh, super reliable machine, very, very heavy. And uh, I had some guys ask about this. This is a stand that my dad built for it because these are always you know they sit on the ground so they're kind of low my dad didn't like bending down to operate this machine he wanted it more of a you know a waist level working area for the controls so he put, built a stand he put some uh these little hose hangers right there on each side for all the leads to hang on and it works really good so right across from the welders over on this side we've got my uh, hot shot 360 heat treating oven here this is a uh, Morgan Milwaukee uh, big vise that I've got sort of on a stand. I can just take it outside if I need to do a bunch of grinding. It's just more of a portable unit. Take it outside there. We've got the ZT Fab grinder racks on the wall. I've also got the ZT Fab TIG rod holders back there. And uh, this guy right here is one of the um, one of the tools that I built early on on my YouTube channel. I call it the rotary welding table. I built it out of this uh, this big face plate that was something that was in our old shop that was never used for anything. So it was based around that guy right there and I just wanted a table that spins. So I've actually got a lock on it back there, that T-handle. 
locks the spindle, keeps it from spinning, but you can take that and just move it effortlessly. Works really good. So you can definitely check this build out on my channel. And then one of our uh, newest acquisitions for the shop here is this uh, welding positioner. This is built by AC Precision. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and check out the rest of this side of the shop here. This is my uh, torch setup right here. And one of the things that I just did, actually I just did this yesterday, I went ahead and added my uh, my new Eutectic Teridyne 2000 setup here on my welding cart. So you've got a flow meter that you have to use with it. So I mounted this on here, a piece of flat bar, and I made a little mount that the uh, torch can sit down in and lock in. And this is ready to go now. I can just wheel this over to the lathe and uh, grab it and light it off and use it. That's the old Rototech kit right there. This is what um, this guy is replacing that setup right there. That's the torch for it right here, the Rototech 1. And then also my uh, Udaloy Ultra Jet. This is also used for uh, build-up work right here. This is the kind of stuff you really don't see much anymore. There's not a lot of people that you know of that's using these types of uh, tools to uh, do welding. So, you know, flame spray welding and uh, build up using powder. That's something that I really enjoy. I love doing that and I love sharing it anytime I get to. All right, we've got our welding table here. This was dad's original setup with this uh, Rock Island vise. We got a Reed 406 right there. It's got the swivel jaw, okay? And then uh, the Greener number three Arbor Press. Down underneath it kind of looks like a uh, total mess, and I know that it is, but that's where I kind of keep a lot of my hammers right here. And, you know, if I need a hammer, I go right here and grab it. A lot of my ball peen hammers. I got a bunch of clamps and just other random stuff down there. On the back, this is a newer purchased vise for me. This is a Starrett number 926, one of the ultimate machinist vise that you can get your hands on is that guy right there. Next to it is a Reed 108. This is one that I... Did a little restoration on, got a video of that, cleaning that guy up, okay? And then a Marvel shear right there behind it. Back up just a little bit. This is a fume extractor. Now I've got it set right here, it's kind of handy. I can use it right over here in this station or rotate it around and use it right over here on the vices to uh, help extract fumes from the shop. I think I failed to mention it, but my shop is climate controlled. I have a big wall unit in the back. And we also have a uh, Mr. Cool uh, split unit for this side of the shop. So when it's hot, humid, I keep the place nice and comfortable in here. Welding cabinet, keep all my welding supplies. We've got a lot of abrasives up here, a lot of Osborne abrasives and my wire wheels, my air grinders, some of my DeWalt stuff up here for my batteries. Just moving on down the line, we've got a Baldor carbide grinder. This is a Lyle drill bit grinder right here. Got a lot of videos of this. This is an excellent tool that they don't build anymore. One of the best small compact drill grinders you can get for your shop. Peter Wright anvil. That was original to our shop right there. Wilton belt sander. This is a Queen City pedestal grinder. Uh, 12 inch by two inch wide wheels. This is where I do all my tool bit grinding for uh, high speed tools and grind all my large drill bits right here. Number five, Davis Key Seater. This is a recent acquisition for me right here. I actually haven't used it for any jobs yet. I had to build some tooling for it, but it does work. I've got it set up, ready to go. Uh, another recent purchase, AccuFinish. Uh, this is a grinder for grinding uh, carbide blades for like scraping. I haven't even used it yet. It, it came with a lot of tools that I bought uh, here recently. This is another newer tool. Uh, Baldor buffer polisher. I've got the scotch Bright wheel here on this side and then the uh, soft wire wheel on the other side And I do plan on building an actual pedestal for this thing But you know, I wasn't using the key seater. So I set it right here and it and it just worked out pretty handy This is just regular uh, Mechanic tools hand tools. I got a rotary bin with hardware here This right here is your uh, Dake Arbor press uh, Tool that I got I believe it was last year. I got this and that's been uh, super handy to have. You can do broaching over here or just any kind of simple pressing operation. It is the uh, dual tonnage. I believe it's uh, seven, seven tons. I can't not remember right offhand. I want to say it was a 14 or 15 ton model uh, for this guy right here. 
All right, moving on down the, the, the rest of the shop here. This was another uh, press that belonged to my dad. It's uh, made by Kent Moore, and we call it the crankshaft press. It is, uh, it's an electric screw press, and it is, an, it is a great machine for broaching keyways if you're doing push broaching. I have broached probably thousands of keyways over here on this press right here. No telling how many my dad did. So we had actually sold this to my previous employer and then they uh, upgraded to a new deck press and I ended up buying it back and setting it up and hooking it up here for me to use. And then a deck manual press, hydraulic press is a 50 ton. The frame of this machine right here, we actually built ourselves at the shop because at the time, my dad didn't like the size frame that the hydraulic was mounted in, you know, factory from, from Dake. So he ordered the channel, all the material, and we just kind of duplicated that, but made it taller and wider and a little more stout here on the, uh, the center bars. All right, back there, we've got our Ingersoll ran air compressor. It's a model T30. It is loud and it's really more than what I need for my shop, but at the time of setting up, this is what we had, so this is what we put in here. I would like to maybe possibly upgrade this guy uh, in the future if I can to maybe a rotary screw compressor that's uh, not quite as big and not as loud, but I've never had any issues with this compressor and we've had it for a good 20 years now. All right, we got a little bathroom right there in the back corner. And then sort of this is my uh, material corner right here. Got a lot of just short drop materials, longer pieces standing up. Got a lot of my fireball tool squares up here and some more abrasives up top. Here we've got the CRC Smart Washer. Excellent tool to have, I love this thing. I'm back here every day cleaning stuff off with this. If you're making parts that's got cutting oil on it or coolant or anything, cut off in the saw, just come right here, rinse it off. Awesome little tool to have. So right next to it, the last machine to uh, share in the shop, this is my uh, bandsaw. It is a Dual Model C4. I picked this up second hand, and while it gets the job done, it's a, it's a pretty good cutting saw. It's not perfect, but it does the job. I've decided that this is gonna be the next machine that I actually want to replace in the shop here. So I've always wanted to add a uh, mitering bandsaw, one of those smaller footprint mitering saws. So uh, it's hard on my mind right now to uh, inquire one of those types of saws, and I'm probably gonna be getting rid of the do-all whenever I do. So eventually this one's gonna go, and we're gonna replace it with a nice mitering bandsaw. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video. Thank you for tuning in. It's interesting to uh, see how the shop has evolved over the years, especially when you go back seven years and you and you see the one that I made when I first started using the shop here. A lot of things have changed. We added on the side over there. I've added several machines in here since then and tools. And we've had a lot of projects along the way that I've shared there on my YouTube channel. So uh, thank you again for tuning in. I hopefully you enjoyed it. And if you don't, if you are not aware of my channel, please check it out. It's called A Bomb 79 on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram and I have a Facebook page there as well where I like to share daily what it is I get into and the projects and the different jobs that come in here, including some of the personal projects that I do for my shop here as well. And uh, keep in mind, if you'd like to watch the full length video of the shop tour, you can go over to my YouTube channel, A Bomb 79 and you can check that out there. All right, so thanks again. Hope you enjoyed, and we'll catch you later.